Hi everybody. Hey, we're Rick and Sharon from Cargo On. Today we want to deviate a little bit from what we normally do our videos on and talk about something that I've recently gotten some interest in and that is the amount of scams that I'm seeing on the internet. Hi, I'm Rick. I'm Sharon. And we are Cargo On. Cargo Conversion Building Camp. I'm seeing a lot of fake ads for campers and, and cargo trailers particularly. So uh, buyer beware? Buyer beware, but you know, one of the things in my mind, I've always thought that I was relatively intelligent and could be outsmart these guys. And the more reading that I do, the more I'm inclined to realize that I am totally a novice in this kind of shady underworld. And I'm also learning to realize that what I thought these scammers were up to is not always the case. They're uh, definitely far more sophisticated than what I was ever led to believe just by my own imaginings. So in this video, are you going to tell us ways that they scam people and ways to maybe defend yourself against it? Well, I'm going to talk about the ways that they scam people. I'm also going to talk about the difficulty that you have with, once you are scammed, getting anybody to help you out because law enforcement is uh, so overwhelmed with everything else that they consider to be more serious a lot of times they just don't even want to bother with you so i guess the most important message we can give to our viewers is how to avoid these scams and i think we've all been i know personally i could have easily gotten taken in by scams before i'm just gullible and i have no idea why they even do some of this stuff right. so let's talk about some of these scams let me give you guys an example. How many of you have ever been uh, received an unwanted sales phone call where somebody's reading from a script or in some cases it's actually a, a recording, but one of the things that I was curious about was, you know, trying to right away get even with or catch these scammers and see that justice was served. And the information that I'm getting from, from the internet says that basically don't try it. Don't stay on the phone. You, the best thing that you could possibly do when you're involved with a scam or so, and particularly somebody on the phone is trying to scam you is hang up. One of the things that I hadn't even considered is that some of these operations are being run from overseas. They have, uh, you know, a multitude of people working in a computer room conducting these scams and just because somebody like gets on the phone with you and you think you've got the upper hand, some of them are so sophisticated that what they actually will do is they will contact you in a variety of ways. They will get one piece of information with each of those contacts. The first time making a telephone call to you could just be to verify that they've got a working telephone number. Then the next thing you know, you're getting an email that's a fake email and if you click on it to respond to it now they've got a verifiable email address one of the things that uh, they're doing with a lot of these sales is they're getting people to go on to Google Voice and get logged in with Google Voice and then uh, they ask them to send them a code and once if you send them this code number, this is to, to verify that you're not a scammer, supposedly. And most people, of course, want to uh, be certain that the person they're dealing with realizes that they're genuine and authentic. So right away, your hackles get ruffled and you're stupid enough to go into Google Voice, do as you're instructed. You get this code and then you send it to them. Once they have that, they can gain access into your Google account. They can even set up bank accounts in your name or possibly access your bank account, depending on the amount of information that they've compiled through the various ways that they've attempted to contact you. Now, I read an article about, you know, people going to law enforcement. Well, the FBI, they first off, they won't get involved unless there's at least $5,000 involved. They don't want to get involved over something that didn't actually happen. In other words, if you call them because you managed to avoid the scam and now you're basically just calling to complain about what happened, they don't want to hear about it. The person has to have already gotten your money before 
law enforcement is going to want to get a become a party to it. So look, I'm on Craigslist right now. I brought this camper up. It's a 2010. It says Easy Coyote Camper for a thousand dollars. Exactly. It's cheap, right? Exactly. It's got text or call and the phone number. Right. So is so, this a scam? Yes, it's a scam. How right. do I know? There are certain things. First off, you know, Craigslist has a way to contact you through Craigslist. When they want to do an end run around that and they say that you have to have to contact them using the email or a, a phone number that they give you or ask you to text them, you can be pretty sure that's a scam. The second thing is there will only be one photograph of the item for sale and a very limited description. Yes. Any Anybody legitimately selling it is going to usually put multiple photographs in of their item because right. they want to basically get you salivating over it. The guy that puts in one photograph and limited information, nine times out of 10, it's a scam. And the other thing that I've done in order to verify this, when they put up an email address or a telephone number, a lot of times I'll go in with my cursor, move it over and I'll copy that email address. Then I'll open another copy of uh, Google Chrome. I'll paste that in and hit enter. And I'll either do it just in the, all information or look at images. And if I go to images and I see that same photograph that's in that ad posted with that email address in five or six different cities around the country, mm -hmm. you can be pretty sure it's a scam. So obviously the scam is they want to take your money for like a down payment or something and then they never give you the product because they don't have the Well, product. like I said, they have different ways of doing it. Most of the ones that are offering an item for sale on like Craigslist, yeah, it's a scam. They want to take a deposit uh, or even full payment. Uh, and they have these different accounts set up that within minutes after your money hits that bank account of theirs, they manage to move it over into cryptocurrency somewhere and they're, they're gone, they've disappeared. So that's one of the things that uh, you've got to contend with. This all happens so fast that once you make the commitment and let go of any money, the chances of recovering it are uh, about a million to one. So where are most of these scammers? Is it Craigslist, uh, eBay, is it, or is it anywhere? I'm seeing them, you know, Facebook Marketplace used to be honorable. There's a lot of them on Facebook Marketplace right now. You know, your first clue is if, if the number's too good to be true, it usually is too it good is. to be true. Okay. Even though we're, we're salivating, like you said, and we want it, and we're hoping it's legit, but okay, right. so stay away. Yeah. Now, there are, you know, ads in these uh, Facebook marketplace and on Craigslist that are really cheap. And if you look at it, there's a reason why. You know, the camper could have had leakage and it's got full mold and it's got to be gutted and all that kind of thing then it's, it's understandable. But even those, some of them, you know, if it's a relatively modern camper and the damage is minimal, just be cautious because you can't just uh, walk into a total stranger and put all your confidence and trust in them that things are going to go your way. The trailer sales both used and new are up. So this is a real good time to to talk about this. So, so we know the scams are online and they're trying to get a down payment and not give them the product. What do they do? Well, most of the time there is no product. These photographs that you see are not even something that they've ever had in their possession. It's a photograph that they just copied off of somebody else on the internet and they are pretending that they have that item available to sell. Okay, so I go online, I see this camper that I want. It's I don't know, about 200 miles away. It's, they don't have the text or phone number. So, and I, I it's got multiple pictures. It, it appears legit. How do I pay for this? Well, anything like a camper or an automobile that has a title, I would want to meet with the owner. I want to see the product in their possession only then and, and see that they have the documents that they claim they have. In other words, if they say they have the title for, for the, camper then they need to be able to produce that title and I need to see that it doesn't have a lien on it uncertain about an ad then you're probably better off to just leave it alone now with the you know, advent of uh, all the 
peripheral businesses that have developed about around RVs and camping. Uh, you've got, you know, all these uh, host campsite programs and that sort of thing. Just be careful because there's going to be some frauds there if there aren't already where, you know, somebody yeah. will run an ad and they, I have a hundred acres up in the Poconos and you can have it all to yourself for a weekend for, you know, 200 bucks and yeah, there, there's uh, always a new fraud coming out. So. And just like that, I mean, they're doing it with rentals. People are putting deposits on apartments now because they're, the market is so hot and competitive. And these, they go show up with a key that doesn't open the door and find six other people there with keys that don't open the door all fell for the same thing, you know. Wow. Um, if you've been scammed or if you know of any other scams or ways to avoid scams, please put them in the comments below. So I made the mistake of trying to film a two second outro upstairs and not in the basement. And I just left it unedited so you can see what I have to go through in this house trying to tape. Uh, <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching everyone. Hi everyone, this is Toby. Say hi. So there you go. We want to talk about, we remind you of ways not to get scammed. This is Toby. He wanted to be in the picture today. Say hi. He's such a gentle dog. So going forward, beware of scams. If you have to put down a deposit, a down payment, I would say put down the smallest amount you can because you may be out of it. So if someone is insisting on a down payment to hold the, the camper or whatever, then, you know, maybe I'll say, okay, fine, 50 bucks. Maybe I'll give them 50 bucks. Shut up. Maybe I'll give them $50 and that would be enough to hold them. Um, but I wouldn't put a lot because I know that um, it could be a scam. Okay, and there's the cat. Hello, cat. Okay. Okay, and this is one of the weirdo cats. Okay. Oh, jeez. This is not going to work. Well, come down here. Why do you have to be in when I'm filming? This is why I have to go in the basement to film. Look at this. Rick, all of a sudden, everybody wants to be a YouTuber. And she's got her butthole in the screen. No, they all want to be in on it. You're such an idiot. Go lay on the couch like you always do and just ignore us. Ugh. So we kind of just, we kind of just, I can't even believe I had to film like this. We kind of just scratched the surface. We could probably do a whole series on this, which I don't think we will, but there's always a scam. Um, I don't even understand some of them, and I definitely don't understand how to avoid all of them, but I guess, you know, be careful out there. If it seems too good to be true, guess what? It is too good to be true. I know your heart's broken. You really, really want it. It's such a good deal, but it's not really such a good deal. They're playing on your emotions, okay? So that's number one. Number two, don't put down a down payment or as little as a down payment is that you are willing to lose, I would put down. And, oh, and now we have the other one. I live in a zoo. And again, this is why I have to go in the basement to film. Two cats, 
three dogs. They were all interrupted except for one dog and one cat, and the one cat is right there, so it's probably only a matter of time before she interrupts. Are we done? Are we all safe? Somebody at the door? Oh my God, the dog food got delivered. <gasps> the dog food came, Max. Maxie, your dog food's here. Oh my God. Come here. Your dog, come say hi to everybody. Maxie. Get down. <laughs> it's always crazy in this. Come here, Max. Come here. Come say hi. Come say hi. Say your dog food came. Oh, my dog food came. Come on up. Uh, well, I don't know how much I can salvage from this video. Um, oh, and here comes Honey. Come here, Honey. Why don't you come up too? Yep. Why don't we all just join in? It's Animal Tube. Come on. It's no longer YouTube. Come on. It's Animal Tube. Yep. We'll be Animal Tubing. You're all crazy. They want to be stars. All right. I'm going to cut this video because I don't think I'm going to be able to use any of it. Oh. <sighs> animals, kids, whatever. That's a wrap, everyone. You know what to do if you like this video. You all come back now, you hear? Still.